Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and today we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule. In the first chapter of the course, we talked about a wide variety of different types of limits, and evaluating limits is one of the skills that is necessary to apply the techniques of calculus successfully. In particular, limits have played a fundamental role in the development of the derivative, and are also an important graphing tool. In order to understand graphing effectively, we'll need to develop more methods to evaluate limits. In this section, we're going to discuss a powerful technique for using derivatives and limits together for evaluating limits of quotients called Le Hapital's rule, which is a rule named after French mathematician Marquis de Le Hapital. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use Le Hapital's rule to evaluate limits for indeterminate forms of type 0 divided by 0 and also plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. And we're also going to talk about Le Hapital's rule to evaluate one-sided limits and limits at infinity. So Le Hapital's rule for indeterminate forms of type 0 divided by 0. Recall that a limit of this form, limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x, is a 0 divided by 0 indeterminate form if the limit of the numerator as x approaches c is 0 and the limit of the denominator as x approaches c is 0. The quotient property for limits discussed in the first chapter cannot be applied here because the limit of the denominator is 0. We can't just simply take the limit of the numerator and limit of the denominator separately because the limit of the denominator is 0 as x approaches c. So a limit may or may not exist, and we cannot tell it which is true without further algebraic techniques to determine if the function can be simplified. So earlier in the course, we talked about using algebraic techniques such as factoring or even multiplying by the conjugate radical to be able to simplify the function and then find out the limit's value. So instead of using all the algebraic techniques, we're going to use a derivative technique. We're going to use Le Hapital's rule whenever a limit is a 0 divided by 0 indeterminate form. So limits of indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0 and Le Hapital's rule. Suppose we have to compute this limit. Limit is x to c of f of x divided by g of x. And we know the limit of the numerator, f of x, is x to c is 0. And the limit of the denominator, g of x, is x to c is also 0. Then it's said that this limit as x to c of f of x divided by g of x is an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. And Le Hapital's rule is applicable and follows. The limit as x to c of f of x divided by g of x, that's the original limit, I put a little L apostrophe H to represent Le Hapital's rules being used, and it says it's also equal to the limit as x to c of the derivative of the numerator, f prime of x, divided by the derivative of the denominator, g prime of x. So this does not mean the quotient rule. This says you take the derivative of the numerator, you take the derivative of the denominator, and you divide the two derivatives together. So whenever you're using Le Hapital's rule to a 0 divided by 0 indeterminate form, do not use the quotient rule, which was low d high minus high d low all over low low. We need to instead evaluate the limit of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. And, more importantly, Le Hapital's rule also works for limits of indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0 when x approaching c, a two-sided limit, is replaced with a one-sided limit, x approaching c from the left, or x approaching c from the right, or infinite limits, x approaching infinity or x approaching negative infinity. So example one, Le Hapital's rule in indeterminate form 0 divided by 0. Use Le Hapital's rule to evaluate those limits that have an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. If a limit does not have an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0, find an alternative way to evaluate the limit and observe what would happen if Le Hapital's rule is applied when the needed conditions are not met. Number one, find the limit as x approaching negative 1 of x to the 8 subtract 1 in the numerator divided by 2x cubed plus 2. So let's find out if we can actually just directly plug in x equals negative 1. So you would have negative 1 to the 8th minus 1 in the numerator and 2 times negative 1 cubed plus 2 in the denominator. If you evaluate this, you'll get 0 divided by 0. That's important because we do have an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. Now we can apply Le Hapital's rule rather than using algebraic techniques. So the limit is x approaching negative 1 of the original limit, x to the 8th minus 1 divided by 2x cubed plus 2. Use Le Hapital's rule, so L apostrophe H, limit as x approaches negative 1. Now you take the derivative of the numerator, derivative of x to the 8th is 8x to the 7th, derivative of negative 1 is 0, and the derivative of the denominator separately, derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So now you can simplify what this function is after you've already taken the derivative. So you have the limit as x approaches negative 1, 8x to the 7th divided by 6x squared, the 8 divided by 6 will reduce to 4 thirds, x to the 7th divided by x squared will give you x to the 5th. So you have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 4 thirds x to the 5th. So now this is a polynomial function. You can directly plug in x equals negative 1 into this function. So you have 4 thirds times x is negative 1, so negative 1 to the 5th. And if you evaluate this, you'll get negative 4 thirds. So notice, again, you drop the limit notation whenever you plug in x equals negative 1. Number 2, 
Let's find out the limit as x approaching 0 from the right side of 5x in the numerator divided by e to the x subtract 1 in the denominator. So again, let's see if we actually get an indeterminate form because we can't use the Lohapatow's rule unless it's indeterminate. So if you plug in x equals 0, you'll have 5 times 0 in the numerator and e to the 0 power subtract 1 in the denominator. You'll get 0 divided by 0. So this is an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. You can use Lohapatow's rule. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the original limit, 5x divided by e to the x minus 1, Lohapatow's rule says it's the limit as x approaching 0 from the right. Derivative of the numerator is 5. The derivative of the denominator is derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So you have 5 divided by e to the x. So now notice that the numerator is always going to be 5. So you can't get an indeterminate form. So you'll have limit as x approaching 0 from the right. That becomes 5 divided by e to the 0 power. 5 divided by 1 is 5. So this limit is 5. All right, number 3. The limit as x approaching 3 from the left side of 2 to the x power subtract 8, all divided by x minus 3. So again, let's check to see if it's actually an indeterminate form. So if you plug in 3 in for the x values, you have 2 to the third power minus 8 in the numerator, and then you'll have 3 minus 3 in the denominator. If you evaluate this or simplify, you'll have 0 divided by 0, which again is an indeterminate form of type 0 divided by 0. So let's use Lohapatow's rule to simplify. The limit as x approaching 3 from the left side, 2 to the x minus 8, divided by x minus 3, that's the original limit. Use the Hopital's rule, the derivative of the numerator. 2 to the x is an exponential function, so the derivative is itself, 2 to the x. But since the base is 2 and it's, it's not e, you have to take natural log of 2 also. And the derivative of negative 8 is 0. The derivative of the denominator is derivative of x is 1. And the derivative of negative 3 is 0. So you'll have 2 to the x times natural log of 2 all divided by 1, which is just 2 to the x times natural log of 2. So the limit as x approaching 3 from the left side of 2 to the x times natural log of 2. So notice you don't have a denominator anymore, so you can't divide by 0. You can plug in 3 in for your x values. So 2 to the third power times natural log of 2 will give you 8 times natural log of 2. And number 4, the limit as x approaching negative infinity, 8 times e to the x in the numerator, divided by 2 e to the x plus 1 in the denominator. So if you imagine x is approaching a very large negative number, that's 8 times e to a very large negative number divided by 2 times e to a very large negative number plus 1. Well, if you remember the, what the graph of y equals e to the x looks like, if x is approaching negative infinity, e to the x is approaching 0. So this is becoming 8 times 0 in the numerator and 2 times 0 plus 1 in the denominator. So if you simplify this, you'll get 0 divided by 1. That's not an indeterminate form. It's 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0. So you cannot use Le Hopital's rule in this case. It would be the incorrect answer. So this limit is just 0. You can only use Le Hopital's rule if it's an indeterminate form. And so we had to use a different method. We had to look at the graph of y equals e to the x and what happened when x was approaching negative infinity. So as in the previous example, it's essential that you check the conditions of Le Hopital's rule and do not use Le Hopital's rule if the conditions are not met. You can only use Le Hopital's rule if it's an indeterminate form. If the conditions are not met for Le Hopital's rule, then if you use Le Hopital's rule, you won't get the correct answer you have to use an alternative method to determine the value of the limit. So let's now talk about limits of indeterminate forms of type infinity divided by infinity. Earlier in the course, we talked about different techniques for evaluating limits of rational functions, such as these. The limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared divided by x cubed plus 3 in the denominator. So we talked about if the numerator has degree less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit will be 0. So the y values are approaching 0, and the functions approaching the x-axis whenever x is approaching infinity. If the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x cubed divided by 2x squared plus 5, then if you have the degree is larger in the numerator compared to the degree of the denominator, then the answer is going to be infinity. The y values for this function are growing arbitrarily large whenever x is growing really large. And the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x cubed divided by 5x cubed plus 6 in the denominator, if the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, they're both 3 in this case, then the limit will be the ratio of the leading coefficients from the numerator and denominator, which will be 3 fifths. So the y values for this function is approaching 3 fifths whenever x is approaching infinity. Now how does this relate with Lohapital's rule? Notice that in each of these limits, you would get an indeterminate form of plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity when x is approaching infinity in each of these three different functions. So in general, if the limit as x approaches plus or minus c of a function is plus or minus infinity, and the limit as x approaches plus or minus c of another function is plus or minus infinity, then the limit as x approaches plus or minus c of the ratio of those functions f of x and g of x 
it gives you an indeterminate form of plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. In addition, this x approaching c or x approaching negative c can also be a one set of limits or an, a limit at infinity. So you can have the x approaching c replaced with x approaching c from the left, x approaching c from the right, x approaches infinity, or x approaches negative infinity. It turns out that you can also use the Hopital's rule for indeterminate forms of type infinity divided by infinity as well. So limits of indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity and the Hopital's rule. Suppose we have to compute the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x again, and we notice that the limit as x approaching c of f of x is plus or minus infinity, and the limit of the denominator g of x as x approaches c is also plus or minus infinity. Then it's said that the limit of x approaching c of f of x divided by g of x is an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity, and you can use the Hopital's rule, and it's applicable as follows. The limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x use the Hopital's rule exactly as we did with the indeterminate forms of type 0 divided by 0. So you take the derivative of the numerator, f prime of x, and you take the derivative of the denominator, g prime of x, and you find out the limit as x approaches c of this ratio. So example 2, the Hopital's rule and indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. Use the Hopital's rule to evaluate those limits that have an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. If a limit does not have an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity, find an alternative way to evaluate the limit and observe what would happen if the Hopital's rule is applied when the needed conditions are not met. So number one, the limit as x approaches infinity, 5e to the x plus 7 in the numerator divided by 2x minus 3 in the denominator. So let's see what happens when x gets really large. If you have 5 times e to a really large number plus 7, e to a very large power is also infinity because e to the x is growing indefinitely large when x is growing large. So you have 5 times infinity plus 7 in the numerator, which will give you infinity in the numerator. So if x is really large, 2 times a really large number is still really large. Then subtract 3 and you still get infinity, a very large number. So you do get an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. We can use the Hopital's rule. So limit as x approaches infinity of the numerator, 5e to the x plus 7 divided by 2x minus 3 in the denominator. You take the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator separately. So you have limit as x approaches infinity. Derivative of 5e to the x is 5e to the x. Derivative of 7 is 0. Derivative of 2x is 2. And derivative of negative 3 is 0. So you have 5e to the x divided by 2, or 5 halves e to the x. And now take the limit as x approaches infinity for, for this expression. So limit as x approaches infinity of 5 halves e to the x. We've already talked about e to the x will grow indefinitely large when x is growing really large. So this is 5 halves times e to a very large number is 5 halves times a really large number, which is still a really large number. So this is infinity. Number two, the limit as x approaching 4 from the left, 2 times natural log of 4 minus x, then subtract 3, divided by 6 plus log base 10 of 12 minus 3x. So again, let's see what happens if we have x is equal to 4. We have 2 times natural log of 4 minus 4 in parentheses, then subtract 3 in the numerator. The denominator is 6 plus log base 10 of 12 minus 3 times 4. If you simplify, you'll have 2 times natural log of 0 minus 3 in the numerator, and you'll have 6 plus log of 0 in the denominator. So if you remember the graph of the logarithmic function, there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So natural log of x or log base 10 of x will have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. That means natural log of 0 does not exist, and log of 0 does not exist. The y values are approaching negative infinity when x is getting really close to 0. So you have 2 times negative infinity minus 3 in the numerator, and 6 plus negative infinity in the denominator. If you simplify, you'll get positive infinity divided by positive infinity. So this is an indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. Let's use the Hopital's rule. The limit as x approaching 4 from the left, the original function, 2 times natural log 4 minus x, in parentheses, then subtract 3 in the numerator, divided by 6 plus log of 12 minus 3x in the denominator. Use the Hopital's rule. So the limit as x approaching 4 from the left. So the derivative of the numerator is 2 times derivative of natural log 4 minus x. It's 1 divided by the argument 4 minus x times the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule, so d dx of 4 minus x. Derivative of negative 3 is 0. Now do the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of 6 is 0. The derivative of log base 10 of 12 minus 3x works the same way as natural log. 1 divided by the argument, 12 minus 3x. But since it's log base 10, you get to multiply by natural log of 10 in the denominator. And then also multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so d dx of 12 minus 3x. So let's take the derivative of the inside function that occurred in the numerator and denominator. So limit as x approaching 4 from the left, 
2 times 1 divided by 4 minus x. Derivative of the inside function, derivative of 4 minus x is negative 1. And now the denominator. You have 1 divided by 12 minus 3x times natural log of 10 in the denominator times derivative of the inside function, derivative of 12 minus 3x is negative 3. So now we need to do a little bit of simplifying. You have 2 times negative 1 times this fraction 1 divided by 4 minus x. That will give you negative 2 divided by 4 minus x in the numerator. And the denominator, you have negative 3 times 1, so it's negative 3, all divided by 12 minus 3x in parentheses times natural log of 10. That makes up the denominator. So we need to find out what is the limit of as x approaching 4 from the left side of this expression. So we can do a little bit more simplifying because we have a fraction divided by another fraction. You can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So limit as x approaching 4 from the left. The fraction that occurs in the numerator stays exactly as it is, but you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So times the reciprocal of the denominator would be 12 minus 3x in parentheses times natural log of 10 divided by negative 3. And so now let's see what happens if you keep simplifying. 12 minus 3x, there's a 3 in common, so factor out the 3. So you have negative 2 times 3 times natural log of 10. And after you factor out the 3, you'll have a 4 minus x left over in the numerator. The denominator is negative 3 times 4 minus x. So the 4 minus x's will cancel out from the numerator and denominator. The 3 and the 3 from the numerator and denominator will cancel out. And the negatives will also cancel each other out and make a positive number. So you just come up with 2 times natural log of 10. So that's what the y values are approaching for this original function as x approaching 4 from the left side. Number 3. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of log base 9 of x minus 2 divided by 3 to the x power plus 5. So again, let's try and see if we actually get an indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. So we have x approaching 2. Let's see what happens if we replace x with 2. We have log base 9 of 2 minus 2, and then 3 squared plus 5 in the denominator. So you have log base 9 of 0, and then in the denominator you have 9 plus 5, which is 14. So we've talked about logarithmic functions are undefined when the argument is 0. So when the x values are getting really close to 0, the y values of the logarithmic function are approaching negative infinity. So you have negative infinity in the numerator, 14 from the denominator. So you have a really large negative number divided by 14. It's still going to be a really large negative number. So we found out that this is not an indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. The y values are just growing arbitrarily more and more negative when x is getting really close to 2 from the right side. So we cannot use Le Hapital's rule because we don't get an indeterminate form this time. So we had to use a different method. We had to look at the graph of the logarithmic function to find out what the limit would be. Okay, number four. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4x squared plus 9, all divided by 1 minus 3 times natural log of 1 minus x. So again, let's see what happens whenever x is approaching negative infinity. So we have 4 times a really large negative number squared plus 9 in the numerator. The denominator becomes 1 minus 3 times natural log of 1 minus a really large negative number. If you simplify all the signs, you have 4 times a really large number, because negative infinity squared is just going to be a positive really large number, plus 9. So you have infinity plus 9 in the numerator, which is infinity. The denominator becomes 1 minus 3 times natural log of 1 plus infinity, which is 1 minus 3 times natural log of infinity. And then what happens with the natural log function whenever x is getting really large? The y value is also approaching a really large number. So this is 1 minus infinity, which is negative infinity. So you get an indeterminate form of type infinity divided by infinity. This time you get infinity divided by negative infinity. So you can use Le Hapital's rule. So limit is x approaches negative infinity of the original function. Use Le Hapital's rule. Take the derivative of the numerator. You get derivative of 4x squared. That's 8x. Derivative of 9. That's 0. Now the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of 3 times natural log 1 minus x. You keep the 3 as the coefficient. It's 1 divided by. The argument is 1 minus x and then derivative of the inside function, so d dx of 1 minus x using the chain rule. So you have limit as x approaches negative infinity. The numerator is 8x. The denominator is negative 3 times 1 divided by 1 minus x, and the derivative of the inside function is negative 1. So after you simplify the denominator, you have limit as x approaches negative infinity, 8x from the numerator. The denominator is negative 3 times negative 1. That's 3 divided by 1 minus x in the denominator. So let's use the same method as we had in problem number 2. Let's multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So limit as x versus negative infinity. The numerator stays exactly as it is, 8x, but you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So now it's times 1 minus x divided by 3. So this gives you limit as x versus negative infinity of 8 thirds times x times 1 minus x. 
So whenever x is approaching to negative infinity, this will simplify to just negative infinity. So the y values are growing arbitrarily more and more negative whenever x is approaching to negative infinity for this function. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about L'Hopital's rule being applied with indeterminate forms of type 0 divided by 0 and also infinity divided by infinity. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we finish up the L'Hopital's rule.